Hey there everyone, it's the Gear Bear here like always, and today I'm coming at you live from my garage in front of the Cadillac Eldorado. Ah, so now you see the hood up and you're thinking, what is Garrett up to? Hmm, thinking, 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 ah, spark plugs. Um, that's obviously your first conclusion, right? Um, but anyhow, so I've had this car now for a little while, uh, just a couple weeks, and um, one thing I've noticed is that when it's idling, um, it does kind of, I'm not sure if it's misfiring exactly, but it's definitely not running super smoothly. When you get on it, it seems fine. I don't really know how it's supposed to feel power-wise, because I didn't drive one of these when they were new. Um, but it feels fine power-wise. Um, the idling is a little rough. And when I try to start it on like a cold morning, um, it's not really, you usually have to give it a little bit of gas or something extra um, and start it up, and then it's fine. A little rough, maybe, in the very beginning. But um, this is really just like step one of, you know, I don't really have any history of the maintenance records on this thing, so I don't really know how old the spark plugs are. Um, so I figure since I have an issue that I think could be solved by changing the spark plugs, and I probably need to change the spark plugs anyways and the wires, um, I figure why not just go ahead and do that. It'll be like the first little project on this car and get my hands a little dirty in the engine. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with the parts list and then we will dig right in. Okay, so are you guys ready for the parts? Let's go, one by one. Okay, first thing up, we have a torque wrench. Uh, that is just to get the proper torque on the spark plugs when we install them. Um, I found a little guide online, and it said for a cast iron head engine, which is what I'm working on right now, um, and my 14 millimeter thread size um, spark plugs there, that I should be doing 26 to 30 feet pound, or pound feet, whatever, um, of torque. So that's why I bought this torque wrench with that range. Um, because I don't have one of those. I have um, a larger one um, with a higher range for when I did my tires on the Suburban um, in another video that I did a long time ago. Um, but yeah, so I bought that. Um, if you don't want to spend money on this because this was like $50 at Lowe's Home Improvement, um, you could just hand tighten it um, with a regular wrench. Um, I think I read online, they said do like tighten it by hand and then when you use a wrench, uh, go ahead and do it about a half or five eighths of a turn. Um, without a torque wrench if you don't want to, you know, spend money on that. Um, and this is, by the way, all those numbers I just said were for spark plugs that have a gasket. Um, if you're doing spark plugs that have a tapered seat, which is a different type of um, spark plug, uh, then find a different guide online or I'll maybe post one that I can find. Next up is our spark plug socket which is a 3 8 inch drive, which matches the torque wrench that I bought. Very important that those match, otherwise you won't be able to use your nice wrench. Um, but yeah, so this is a spark plug socket. Uh, two things that make it special. One is that it's a little bit longer than a normal socket, which you could normally buy a longer socket. But the second thing is that on the inside of this, there's a rubber piece that kind of caresses the ceramic part of your spark plug, um, and that just helps you keep from breaking your spark plugs as you install them. Uh, so very important. Um, let's go ahead and move on to our spark plugs themselves. I got these on Amazon. These are just regular copper spark plugs. Um, I bought these ones as opposed to iridium or double platinum or platinum, whatever, you know, all the fancy stuff. Because frankly, I just figured since these were good enough when the car was new, I should just go ahead and stick with what the car came with. Um, and these are pretty much factory, um, uh, you know, modern replacements for what the car came with. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick with that because it should be fine. Uh, moving along, I got some spark plug wires um, because I figure if I'm redoing the spark plugs, I might as well go ahead and put on new wires. Why not, right? Um, so yeah, got those as well, uh, just a new wire set. Moving along to these two guys over here, let's start with the anti-seize lubricant. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the threads of the spark plugs as I install them. And that's just going to make it so that way if I ever have to change them in the future, which I probably will um, if I keep the car long enough, um, it won't, um, you know, kind of, it doesn't really fuse, but you know how when metal over time, um, two metals next to each other, they kind of corrode into each other, and they can just be really hard to remove after sitting, you know, screwed on like that for a really long time, so that's going to help prevent that. And the dielectric grease is going to go on the boots of the spark plug wires, um, just to make sure there's a really nice connection between the end of the spark plug and the wires themselves. Um, because I don't want it to ever not have a great connection because it's kind of a big deal if the spark plugs have a really good connection with the spark plug wires and their distributor and the rest of that electrical setup um, because that's how your engine runs. So I figure why not go ahead and spend a little money and uh, go ahead and do that too. Uh, just in case it gets a little um, wet or corroded over time, you know, whatever. 
Um, so yeah, this is kind of everything that you need. Also, I just noticed that these spark plugs are bougie. Um, so I guess I got the best because they're bougie. Um, if anyone knows what language that is, go ahead and inform me. All right, so here's the seven liter beast right here. And let's go ahead and kind of run through what we're gonna do here. So on each side of the engine, I'm only gonna point out on this side, but everything's the same on that side. Um, there's four uh, cylinders and four spark plugs. So there's one, I already pulled the boot off of it right there, but there's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four down there. And so with each spark plug, you've got a wiring coming off of it and that all runs up to this guy. This here is a distributor and what its job is to do is to send electricity down to these spark plugs at the right time and make the engine um, ignite and uh, go ahead and give power and you know make the engine function. So what we're going to go ahead and do today is replace each spark plug and its corresponding wire that goes to the distributor and we're just going to work our way around the engine um, and then at the very end we'll go ahead and start her up and hopefully she idles a little better. Um, and as I do this, I'll go ahead and go through each of the little details that I'm going to do uh, to try to make this job last and work as best as possible. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm on the driver's side rearmost uh, spark plug here. And uh, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove the boot. And I was fortunate enough that on this car, the boots are very easy to pull off. You just go ahead and grab at the actual boot, not the wiring itself, and pull back. There we go. It wasn't that hard, I just wasn't getting a good grip on it at first. Um, but yeah, so I guess some cars, these can be kind of on there really good. Um, these have probably been replaced at some point in the past, so they're not that old. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and pull the boot off, um, grabbing here. And now we're gonna go ahead and use our socket here, along with um, a little extender and our socket wrench. And we're gonna go ahead and back this guy out and remove it. And just like that, with the power of the camera, uh, we've removed this guy. Um, it was a little firm to get it out at first, um, but just kind of give it a little nudge, or maybe even if you have a small little breaker bar, um, you know, you don't want to use too much force. If it's too hard to get out, um, then you might want to try a different method because you don't want to screw up those threads or anything or break anything off. Um, but it was, it was pretty snug, um, but I just kind of give it a little bit extra oomph, and um, it finally came out. And you can see our spark plugs here uh, you know, it doesn't look too bad, I, I don't think. Um, it is a little, you can see the tip there, let me see in the light, there we go. Um, that's brown, and I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but that looks like, you know, you know just because of the heat and stuff over time, um, it's kind of aged that out. And it's a little bit uh, kind of greasy here, you can see on my finger there, it's shiny, yeah, there you go right there. Um, probably from the anti-seize that someone put on, um, but it is a little uh, greasy too. Uh, so I think it was time for these guys to be replaced. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead and replace um, by putting in the new spark plug um, and apply some anti-seize and we'll put the boot on and we'll go from there. Okay, so there's the old wire for spark plug number eight and there's the wiring kit that I got for this car. Um, if you guys can tell or not, but uh, there's different lengths because there's different lengths from the distributor to where the different spark plugs lie. So I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but I'm just going to go through these and find one that's the same length, and that's what I'm going to use to replace in there. Huzzah! We found a match! So this will be our replacement. All right, so now it's lube time, and I have to confess I'm a little inexperienced. Um, but anyhow, with the uh, dielectric grease, um, I put a little dollop in here. Uh, not too much, but um, it looks like a lot on camera, but it's really not that much. It's pretty deep in here. And I'm just going to use my finger to kind of shove it kind of as deep in as possible to where the actual electrical connection is. And this is the boot that is going to go at the distributor. And then I'll do the same thing for the other end that'll go onto the actual spark plug uh, once I install the spark plug. Um, but yeah, so just put a little bit in there and kind of smish it with your finger. Um, and I, I guess that's how that works. On the instructions for the dielectric grease, here, let me put that down. There you go. Let's see. It says specifically, you guys read that? I'll read it for you. Uh, for spark plugs, um, be sure ignition is off, clean off old grease, which we don't have that, everything's new. Coat the inside of the boot and ceramic portion of the spark plug with a thin layer of dielectric grease. And then it's install. Um, so, you know, you don't want it to be too thick. So I'm gonna smush that in and I think that'll be okay. 
Um, but yes, yeah, so let's keep on going along with this. So this is our brand new AC Delco spark plug. Be careful not to drop this because you don't want to mess up the end of your spark plug. If you drop it, everyone online at least has said uh, to just go ahead and not use it and just buy a new one. Um, but yeah, so it came with, I'm going to try to point with one hand, uh, this gasket's a metal um, kind of uh, washer type gasket. Um, you want to go ahead and put that on. So if you can kind of see, can you guys tell that there's like, it's it's one ring, but it's kind of made out of two um, rings. You want to do it so that way the smaller one is on the butt here of the spark plug. So there's the tip that goes in the engine. You want to make sure that the, the biggest one um, is on top and then the small one, I guess as that seals in, um, that kind of makes this um, a tapered seat um, type. It's a tapered seat equivalent, um, making a gasket type uh, spark plug work in the same way as the other type of spark plug that I mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the only thing I had to figure out was to do that. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and apply the dielectric grease. Okay, so I'm running out of clean hands here, um, but I went ahead and applied, oh, when I said um, that uh, dielectric grease a minute ago I actually meant the uh, anti-seize lubricant. Anti-seize lubricant applied to the spark plug, not dielectric grease. That goes on the tip or where the boot will go later. But on the part that goes into the engine, do not use the dielectric grease, use the anti-seize lubricant. Um, so as you can see, I applied some there. I don't really, I'm not sure how heavily I should do it. I don't want to put too much and you don't want any oozing up here where it's going to go into the engine. So I put on a little bit to kind of coat into the grooves. I think, you know, as I turn it, um, you know, it'll spread. Uh, so I think that's fine. You know, I, I don't want to put too much in there. Um, but let's go ahead and install this into the engine. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and go tighten it up and then go down the line and do all or the rest of the eight. Okay, so I just went ahead and put in the new spark plug, and I'm using the socket without the ratchet wrench, um, just so I don't cross threads or anything. And now just with my hand, that's nice and snug. Um, so it is in there. Um, and now I can go ahead and use my torque wrench to actually get it up to spec. One thing I did notice that in some of these spots, it's gonna be a little hard to get that torque wrench in here, so I might have to use um, you know, one of these extenders. I used this to get it out because it didn't matter. Um, but when you use a torque wrench, using an extender like this does kind of mess up with your um, your actual torquing specs. Um, so I haven't quite figured out what I want to do with that yet. I might set the torque just a little bit less um, when I do the spark plugs when I'm torquing them down with an extender. Um, or, you know, I could just not use the torque wrench at all and just do, you know, the quarter turn thing. Um, which is what you could do if you didn't have a torque wrench anyway. So I'm not exactly sure um, what I want to do about that. It's bright. It's still bright. Um, but yeah, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do yet, um, but I will figure that out momentarily and then get back to you guys. Okay, so I've actually finished putting in my spark plugs, but I know that I need to revisit what I was just talking about, and that is how much did I tighten the spark plugs when I put them in. What I ended up doing was um, actually setting my torque wrench to 20 um, pound feet or feet pounds, whatever. I'll put it down below. Uh, but yeah, I set it to 20 because kind of testing it out, I realized that that felt like the torque wrench set at 20 with my particular extender, that felt like the amount of torque or strength that I had to apply um, to the spark plugs when I was removing them. And so I did that rather than just doing it manually, kind of with feel, um, because I want all the spark plugs to be about the same. Um, I don't want one loose and then maybe towards the end I get a little tired or something, or I guess I would looser. Um, but yeah, so that's what I did. So I kind of figured out how to set my torque wrench to the amount of force necessary to kind of match the force that it was to take it out. Um, so I kind of think that that works. So for me, it was 20 uh, feet pounds. Um, but yeah, so that is what I did for all these guys. But like I said before, uh, hand um, tighten them first so that way you don't cross any threads and then finish up with your torque wrench or doing the quarter turn thing like I said earlier. Um, but yeah, so that's, I kind of wanted to revisit that. Um, but yeah, so now all of the, um, the spark plugs are in now. So now let's go ahead and start up the car, but I need to mention one more thing. So that other thing I need to mention was on the passenger side. This would be spark plug number seven. Um, you can kind of see down here, I put the boot on already, but you notice that it's a little tight here because of the AC compressor. So what I had to do is I could not use um, the torque wrench because it wouldn't fit in there. And I couldn't even use the extender because, once again, it was just way too tight in here. Um, actually I actually had to use 
Where is it? Let me go get it. Magic of the camera. So yeah, this is what I actually had to use back on this one was this really uh, thin headed um, uh, socket wrench here uh, with my socket. And that fit in there, even though this is an elongated um, uh, socket for you know uh, the spark plugs, um, this actually did fit. Um, and then I just had to tighten it down uh, by hand, by feel. Um, so, you know, that's, ow, I almost hit my head on that. Um, but yeah, so that's the only one where I couldn't use my torque wrench. But yeah, in hindsight, after doing this whole project, I have to say, you probably don't really need the torque wrench. I mean, if you want everything to be consistent and the same, like I did, um, then that achieves that goal. But, you know, I didn't even get the correct torque because I had to use an extender anyways. And then I ended up just kind of guessing with how much I should set it to. So really, I think that's kind of a good lesson, is that you can do anything with basic hand tools um, that you probably already have in your garage, or it's very you know affordable to go ahead and get yourself a good set that'll be used for many things. It's a good investment. Um, but yeah, you don't need a $50 torque wrench, because that's kind of a waste, I think. Um, but I used it anyways, and it worked. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of a good lesson uh, from this, I think, that I kind of want to share with you guys. But anyhow, now let's go ahead and start this car up, and uh, let's see how she runs. All right, moment of truth. Are you guys ready to see if it worked? Let's find out. Okay. We did it! We did it! Oh my gosh, that started perfectly. That's good, okay, that worked. I didn't even have to like gas it or anything. That worked really nice. I am very happy. Uh, why did that say generator on? Hmm, let me turn it off. Oh, it went away. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, well that worked really good. So changing your spark plugs is not that hard at all. I am really happy with that. Let um, me shut this off in a minute and then I'll come back to you guys. All right, so we're at the end of the day here and I am pretty satisfied with how this job went. That was super easy. I always like to kind of remind you guys that I don't have a lot of mechanical experience and I did all of this within, I would say it took me two hours and that really wouldn't take most people that long, but I took a break. I know I had something to drink and whatnot. But yeah, to me, I think this is as easy as an oil change. Um, so really, um, yeah, it's definitely very low on the totem pole as far as, you know, difficulty is concerned. Um, but yeah, so as you guys saw, it runs perfectly fine. Um, it didn't really affect, I don't think, how it idles. I need a little bit more time to kind of see if that really changed anything. But anyhow, I hope that this was very helpful for anyone that just needs to learn how to change spark plugs. Um, there was really nothing specific to this car. This was very simple, um, even to access the spark plugs themselves. Um, it's not going to really help anyone that was working on one of these cars because this is so simple. But um, if you were you know, watching this video trying to figure out how to change spark plugs um, and you appreciated the video, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And if you liked this video and you want to see more about this car, my whole fleet of cars, um, it's getting to be a fleet at this point, uh, please subscribe to the channel One Brain Four Wheels. I would really appreciate it. My next goal is 1,000 subscribers. I'm just kidding. But uh, let's try to get to 300 would be really a nice number. Um, I would really appreciate it. If you want to see more of me, of course, then please subscribe. And uh, have a great day. And thank you so much once again for watching.